For over a decade, Manta Ray was the default render engine bundled with Autodesk Maya and Max and used on projects from Star Wars to The Matrix. However, in the mid-2010s, Autodesk phased out Manta Ray in favor of Arnold, a newer render engine. This didn't happen out of the blue, it was gradual but certain. But what does NVIDIA have to do with the downfall of Manta Ray? Or is it just the fault of Autodesk as usual? So what exactly happened? Manta Ray was released in 1989 and became one of the first commercially available ray tracing renderers. Throughout the 90s and 2000s, it was widely adopted. Alias Wavefront integrated it into Maya, then Autodesk into Max, and Avid into Softimage, making Manta Ray a default in major 3D software. It earned an Academy Sci-Fi Award in 2003 for its contribution to film in rendering. By the late 2000s, it has been used on most high-profile films of that era, like The Hulk, The Matrix Reloads and Revolutions, Star Wars Episode II, The Day After Tomorrow, Poseidon, and so on. It was actually a de facto engine that many artists learned first, like myself. It was the first render engine to learn in Max. In 2007, Nvidia acquired Mental Images, Manta Ray's developer. Following this, Nvidia's development focus turned increasingly into GPU graphics, and some key Manta Ray engineers left in the following years. Manta Ray continued to be updated, but competition from newer render engines began to chip away at its dominance, especially in high end VFX. Meanwhile, Arnold was making waves. The company that developed it was called Solid Angle. You see, Arnold was used a lot as Sony Pictures Imageworks and other studios in the early 2010s, proving itself when it came to high-end VFX work. By 2014 to 2015, Arnold had become the go-to render engine at hundreds of studios and was considered the industry standard for feature animation and VFX. Just a couple of years later, in 2017, the team behind Arnold won a Sci-Fi Tech Academy Award for advancing production ray tracing. This success actually paved the way a decade of dominance later on. Autodesk's relationship with Nvidia over Manta Ray began to fray, which led to an interesting decision by Autodesk. You see, in 2015, Autodesk announced that Manta Ray would no longer be pre-installed with Maya by default. This was a strong hint that Autodesk was preparing to move away from Manta Ray. Users could still actually manually install Manta Ray if they needed that, but Autodesk was clearly positioning itself for a new default. I mean a new default render engine. This is the case because Autodesk was cooking something behind the curtains. You see, in early 2016, Autodesk purchased a company called Solid Angle, the developer of Arnold. This acquisition made it virtually certain that Arnold would be the next render engine that is gonna be integrated into Autodesk products. I mean Max and Maya. Indeed, this year is often seen as the beginning of the end for Manta Ray inside Maya and Max. At the same time, this is when people knew this is officially the end. Maya 2017, which shipped in July 2016, was the first release to include Arnold as the built-in render engine and phased away Manta Ray. And to be honest, this was a really important change. After over a decade, Maya users had now Arnold at their fingertips instead of Manta Ray. On the other hand, Manta Ray was offered as an optional NVIDIA plugin for those who still needed it, and a lot of people did, but it was no longer the out-of-the-box solution. Shortly after, Autodesk hired certain key experts to possibly help with the transition and rendering strategies. And here is the thing, NVIDIA failing to keep Manta Ray at the top was only one reason why Autodesk dumped their render engine, aka Manta Ray. You see, Manta Ray is fundamentally a bias renderer that relies on caching techniques to approximate global illumination. These techniques could introduce artifacts like splotches, flickers, and so on, if not finely tuned. Arnold, in contrast, is an unbiased, physically based Monte Carlo path tracer. It computes lighting with brute force ray tracing by default, so in practice, it means Arnold produces clean, flicker free global illumination with less user tweaking whereas Manta Ray often required painstaking adjustment when it came to settings like photons, radiance, caches, etc. to get similar quality without artifacts, but this differs depending on the experience of the user. 
as you might expect. Artists found Arnold's brute force approach yielding more consistent photorealistic results out of the box, so it was simpler and more accurate. In 2017, Max also dropped the free inclusion of Manta Ray. In addition to NVIDIA's GPU renderer iRay, Arnold became the default renderer in Max 2018, with an interactive license included. As with Maya, NVIDIA made Manta Ray available as a separate plugin for Max 2018 and beyond, free for single-frame use but requiring a paid license for network and batch rendering, which is understandable because it did the job actually for a lot of people. After a few plugin updates, NVIDIA pulled the plug. So in November of 2017, NVIDIA announced it would cease sales of Manta Ray and focus on other rendering technologies. They stated that existing subscriptions would be honored through 2018, with support and bug fix updates, but no new features would be developed. This, as you might expect, marked the official end of life for Manta Ray as a product. The nearly 30-year run of Manta Ray had come to a close, and Arnold cemented its place in the industry as Autodesk's flagship render engine. And here is the thing. It was uncharacteristic of Autodesk, but they continued to improve Arnold, eventually adding GPU acceleration in Arnold 6, in addition to other things, and it became deeply integrated into Max and Maya's workflows. Lots of users know that Manta Ray's legacy lives in older projects and it will forever be a foundational piece of rendering history, but unfortunately, its development has stopped. To be honest, lots of artists didn't want the shift. They actually had no choice. So in other words, the transition from Mentor Ray to Arnold happened in the context of an industry-wide shift toward physically-based rendering, which took over everything, to be honest. So people had to adapt, and the demise of Mentor Ray was almost certain anyways. So Mentor Ray was an icon of that era, powerful but complex. As I said, as computing grew, the 2010s saw ray tracing and brute force global illumination becoming more viable as the default approach, and render engines like Maxwell, V-Ray, and Arnold embraced no shortcuts, physically accurate rendering, and the results spoke for themselves. The reaction in the 3D community to Arnold replacing Mentor Ray was mixed initially, but largely positive in the long run. Many artists who had struggled with Mentor Ray's complexity welcomed the change, but for many it wasn't that complex, to be honest. They found Arnold's physically-based approach less prone to unexpected artifacts and appreciated focusing on artistic lighting rather than struggling with technical settings. As one artist put it, Manta Ray wasn't terrible, but it seemed confusing. Arnold made a lot of sense to me. Lots of people share this sentiment, but for long-time Manta Ray users, it was actually fine. More than that, it did a fantastic job. So there are different opinions, as you can see. Studios also voiced support for the Switch, with Arnold's widespread adoption in the industry. And here is the interesting number. Over 300 studios adapted it by 2017, which is a lot. Many teams already had Arnold experience or saw the benefit of aligning Max and Maya's default with a renderer that they were actually using in production, which was a plus. So it became easier to move assets and talent between studios. If everyone was using a similar model renderer and training new artists was simpler with a physically based workflow. You see, Manta Ray had been the industry for nearly 30 years, so its discontinuation came with a tinge of nostalgia. Generally speaking, the death of Manta Ray came as a blow to many artists, even though we had long since ceased to use it. I mean as a render engine in production, because for an entire generation, it was a render engine they used for most of their professional lives. Autodesk release notes actually acknowledge that some users simply don't like change and might be frustrated, but encourage them that Arnold was the future and it was worth learning. Many who were initially skeptical grew to appreciate Arnold's results and stability because the results spoke for themselves, which gave artists confidence that they weren't losing capability by moving from Manta Ray but gaining a lot of power and flexibility with Arnold. Lots of people didn't like it, but liked what they saw and the results they had. In hindsight, Onodesk's decision provided the push, but the community's positive reception 
actually validated the move. So Arnold is now the new default, while Mentor Ray has gracefully retired. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.